Justin Gay, Seeds of Zanzadu. So today, we're post-harvesting. I've already started a little bit of the sunflower. I gotta hurry up and get these guys out of the water. I might have sleep in my eye. It's about six o'clock in the morning. I typically wake up about five anyway. That's when I start doing my morning uh, routine and all that stuff just to get prepared for the day. But anyway, it's Friday and those are the days I come out a little bit earlier. Normally I don't get started with my day until about seven, but on Fridays I try to get out here no later than six. Definitely when I'm washing my greens. I don't want to be working into the heat. So, you know, we want to knock these things out pretty early. Then we're in here as well. So we, if we need to, we can actually cool it down in here as well if we need to. I've actually already bubbled these. So now it's going to jump into the sunflower. So yeah, that sunflower is still the longest one for me to deal with. They're still the most tedious of all the uh, microgreens to deal with, of course. Although, now they're really not that big of a deal in terms of the sunflower holes. I do this as I begin to put them into the dry basket. Just kind of give them my hand once over, see if there's anything exposed. Sure, there's probably stuff inside of my hand that I can't see that are actually going into the dry basket, but if I really have time, I'll actually look at the dry bucket as I throw stuff in. I can get a lot of the shells off or make sure that they're off without having to take it to the dry rack. Because the dry rack, for the most part, is still the last line of defense that we have, really. Between doing it like this, uh, Kind of giving this a once over like that and then plus with the dry rack we normally get i gotta say at least a good 90 percent of all the cells off. still pretty much doing the three coat process that we used to do before i just want to take a look at that uh i have some older videos down below showing you how to wash without this setup putting it this way is <laughs> a lot more efficient but you know you all gotta start somewhere man you know these things are The microgreen game, man, I mean to the sunflower microgreen game, to be honest with you, it's growing your sunflowers, get your sunflower mature enough to where these shells pretty much just fall off, not be a big deal. Different lots, at least that's what I've heard, different lots a lot of times uh, have a lot to do with the way the shells kind of fall off as well, to a certain degree. But what I've learned, even in the winter, when it's hard to get these shells off, because it's harder to get your sunflowers mature. I just keep them under lights. I mean, these things come out looking like the Incredible Hulk. They're just so green. Yeah. I do that, and that really helps get the, uh, the holes off the sunflower shoes. You know, throughout the day, you just kind of dust them. I don't even really do that anymore. That could be why I'm dealing with more of them. Could it be the maiden voyage for these joyfish baskets here? Unfortunately, the ones I got were a bit too small to fit directly into the receptacle. If they did fit into the basket that I made, it's a little loose, but it did seem to spin. So let's see what happens now when it's way down. So far, so good. Actually worked out cool. With the sunflower shoots, you just put them directly on the screen. These fans were the first thing that I built. And honestly, I think it was the right decision. These things really keep our greens dry. I mean, if you can feel these sunflower right now, like they're, they're pretty damn dry. Also moving them into the garage really helped out a lot as well, especially in the winter. Outside, in the winter when it's moist, condensation from the air pushing down into the fan and then going back into your green. So it really takes a long time for them to dry out there. And here, we can keep it dry all year long. So it's cool to be able to have the option of keeping this thing kind of controlled if we need to. But seeing that we do most of this stuff in the morning, especially in the summer, we're pretty cool. Now for the sunflower, we don't use this. I'll show you this thing in action pretty soon. I try to keep all the machines working at once as much as I possibly can. That means we're kind of moving through it. Baskets, I can actually put like six pounds of everything in, which is double. We like to dry all of our greens and microgreens on, actually it's just, it's insect netting. It really helps out a lot because now we're not worrying about holes during
during washing the sunflower, I keep the little sheet off so I can let the sunflower shells actually drop through the mesh. You get salad greens and the microgreens without worrying about any kind of seed holes. So put the little cloth up there. So now we can actually just pick up all the greens all at one time and not have to handle them as much. I'm just sorting out all the, like the little leaves and like the stuff that might have been cut. The bug damage leaves I have. At the same time, I'm spreading the greens across. We got to get by those burgrata bugs again. I was able to get most of the stuff out, the, net, the bad stuff out on the field. A couple little pieces here that I missed. Go ahead and let that dry. And now we will do the lettuce greens. I typically like to actually wash my salad greens all at once and mix them in the uh, wash as well. I didn't do that today for some reason. I think because I'm kind of recording with you guys, I'm kind of thrown off a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just wash these out and um, we'll mix on the table. When you mix it in the water, it pretty much does it for you. Really gingerly, you know, you can do it by hand like that too. I'm almost tempted just to start throwing some of that stuff back in here. I shall show you a little bit. Just, this is that easy. These guys don't even be washed that much. I feel as though the field is the first step to uh, a clean wash, you know? Or an easy wash. Anytime you see something, you know, just get it out at that moment. Feeds on the field, make sure you get them out. The more you get out, out there, the easier it is in here. And then plus having that kind of that attitude carries over into here. So now I'm like just way faster when it comes to actually just sorting things out of in my lettuce mixes. I like these baskets, got handles and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this stuff spin. Mix that stuff up while letting it dry. Get it back to some totes. Uh, and then pretty much, that'll be it for me. I'm gonna get a splash guard for that thing. Finding out some of the new problems with using the basket now. I didn't, I didn't expect some of the things that I'm running into to be running into, but it's all good. It'll be a little easy fix. I also find greens to that metal screen, the weight of your hand can actually damage the greens with it being directly on that metal screen. Um, that's another reason why I like to use these. Uh, it's just way more easier and gentler on the green itself, you know? So this stuff is gonna be separated and um, processed for the different markets. Anyway, man, that's pretty much how we get down in our post-harvesting section. It's really compact, I like it a lot. I can move through a lot of greens at once. We're not gonna be doing a lot of weight today. Nevertheless, we will move through it very fast. Plus, the product, the in-game product is really nice too. A lot of people really uh, congratulate us and always are hearing um, and thanking us. Uh, pretty much keeping our product to where they can keep it for, you know, for at least a week, if not more. Most people, a lot of people come back, uh, especially with our market mixes and say, I can't believe you still had your microgreens and they've been sitting in our refrigerator for over two weeks. It's bittersweet, I guess, you know what I'm saying? But uh, eat, eat your greens faster than two weeks. <laughs> anyway, peace out.